This is the unit 7.1 screencast, which corresponds to chapter 15 in your textbook uh, on air pollution. So we're just beginning air pollution. So first of all, what is this a picture of? Well, it's a picture of our atmosphere taken from the, uh, the space station. And you can see that it's incredibly small. You can just barely see the curvature of the Earth in this picture. And it actually is quite a fragile envelope uh, protecting uh, the species on Earth and, and performing some important ecosystem services. So we definitely affect the chemistry. You guys have learned about the great smog in London when there was a lot of coal burning during the uh, Industrial Revolution is when it began. But of course, in the 1950s, uh, people continued to burn coal. And now there were combustion engines, people driving as well and combining uh, multiple different pollutants. Uh, there was a, a significant soot and um, sulfuric acid event. It was sulfur dioxide, but that of course reacts with water in your lungs, and produces sulfur, uh, sulfuric acid. So uh, 4,000 people died in four days of bronchitis and pneumonia and other respiratory illnesses. An additional roughly 8,000 deaths over the next two or three months because of lingering effects of that um, of that incident. And it was the first major air pollution incident uh, in the planet and, and really, spurred some important uh, governmental responses. Take a look at the data. Uh, the, the background lines are shown here. So our uh, December of 1951 um, uh, smoke and sulfur dioxide. And then here is 1952. So precisely one year later uh, of the same dates. And you can see how the concentration spiked. And unfortunately, the deaths spiked as well. Here's smoke concentration in uh, milligrams per cubic meter. So uh, the, the death rate corresponded, uh, the data overlap uh, quite nicely in an unfortunate way uh, in this major event. Uh, here's some pictures and, and the thing to take to heart here is that this is broad daylight. This is the middle of the day. Buses had to use headlamps. People were getting hit by buses and trains because they couldn't see, and they breathed that in. And and it's important to note that air quality has a huge impact on human health. If you take a look, uh, actual causes of death, 1990, 2000, uh, air pollution, both indoor and outdoor air pollution, toxic agents, um, is uh, is fifth in uh, cause of death. Uh, noted fourth is microbial uh, agents, flu, pneumonia, etc. And we're all acutely aware of that. Um, physiologic, actual causes of death, things like heart disease or cancer, respiratory illnesses is number four uh, in 2000. So it has a, an absolute effect on human health. The atmosphere itself uh, is mostly uh, nitrogen and oxygen, 99% uh, of it, a little bit of argon, and some other important things, of course, CO2, but it is a vanishingly small percent of what we, what we uh, breathe. Uh, some of these gases, even though present in tiny quantities, have big effects on the, uh, on the health and temperature of the planet. Um, the atmosphere performs some really important ecosystem services that we're going to learn about in this unit. Blocks and protects us from UV radiation, which of course, course is, causes cancer. Uh, it moderates the climate. It distributes heat across the planet, so it keeps much of it warm. Um, and of course, uh, it redistributes water as part of the hydrologic cycle. So all these things are interesting and important. The structure of the atmosphere is shown on this slide. Remember, we live in the troposphere at the very uh, lowest part, but that still goes up about 15 or 16 miles. Here's the altitude in kilometers on this axis, uh, altitude in miles over here, so 14 or 15 miles. Uh, that's where weather occurs. That's where the hydrologic cycle occurs. Um, uh, some of the very biggest storms will extend up into the stratosphere a little bit, uh, but that's really high up. Uh, airplanes fly considerably lower than than, than uh, 10 kilometers, uh, most commercial airplanes. But the stratosphere is important because of the ozone layer. And the ozone, again, is protective of, uh, of, of life on Earth by absorbing UV radiation, which breaks up cell walls, etc. Uh, a couple things to note also on this graph is the pressure. Uh, the pressure is practically zero for most of the measurable atmosphere. Uh, the stratosphere has some density of molecules, but most of the air, most of the, the stuff that on Earth in the, is, is in the, uh, sorry, the stuff meaning the 
sort of gaseous at molecules in the atmosphere is in the troposphere. Uh, this red line indicates temperature change with height. Uh, and it's true that in the troposphere, it does get colder as you climb Mount Everest. The higher up you go, the colder it is. But then it, the, the stratosphere does absorb all of that ultraviolet radiation. And by doing so, uh, it increases in temperature. Um, I wouldn't worry about knowing so much what the strato stratosphere, sorry, the uh, uh, mesosphere or the thermosphere do. Uh, it's really these two bottom two layers are, are the most important to know. Um, I show this just to show uh, uh, ozone concentration. So here's stratospheric ozone. This is where the absorption of the sun's ultraviolet radiation occurs. Um, and that, again, is protective of life on Earth. Uh, there is some ozone that occurs close to the uh, Earth's surface. It's, I, don't, I hope you can see that. I don't know if you can. Um, but uh, it's very minor. There, that was shown. Let that sit. Uh, it's minor, but it's also bad for human health. Ozone is a, a very reactive molecule, and that is what is protective of the Earth's uh, uh, life by absorbing the ozone and being reactive in the stratosphere. But if it's found on the on ground level and we breathe it in, it is bad for you. So we're going to learn about two kinds of ozone. It's the good ozone way up high in the stratosphere and the bad ozone at ground surface. All right. Um, some natural, uh, some air pollution is natural. The one of the biggest uh, contributors to airborne uh, particulates are forest fires, so things like dust storms, volcanic eruptions. Uh, they contribute a kind of particle to the atmosphere called aerosols, which are essentially a, a kind of smoke, an airborne solid particulate. Uh, and aerosols definitely affect climate. They reflect sunlight back into space. And by doing so, the planet cools. And there's actual data uh, to show this. Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines was in 1991. I remember this distinctly. And look at the size of this explosion. It blew uh, particles into the stratosphere in a gigantic volcanic eruption. Uh, and it actually cooled the planet. So notice here the impact of the eruption of Mount Pinatubo. Pinatubo. This is global average temperature. The the um, the y-axis is whoops. Sorry, let's go back. Uh, pardon me. There we go. The the y-axis is degrees above or below a 20-year average. In any event, there's a big global cooling event uh, right when the the eruption of um, of Mount Pinatubo occurred. So it is observed. It is a thing that happens. Um, some things to know about air pollution, just straight up terminology. Um, uh, air pollution are chemicals that are added to the atmosphere by our activities in high enough concentrations to be harmful. Remember, the, the atmosphere is going to dilute an awful lot of stuff, so it would be practically harmless to, to, to emit that. There's two kinds. There's a primary air pollutant. A primary air pollutants are emitted and and are pollutants as they are emitted. So nothing happens after they're emitted. That's things like carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide from the tailpipe of your car. Uh, and then there's secondary air pollutants. And secondary air pollutants don't occur, aren't emitted by humanity, but they occur because of chemical reactions in the atmosphere. New things are formed um, when the, uh, the primary air pollutant reacts with other substances found in the atmosphere. So let me show you just a quick example. Primary pollutants are things like hydrocarbons, uh, emitted or particulates emitted from your tailpipe when you burn gasoline. You also emit carbon dioxide. Coal burning emits sulfur dioxide, of course. Uh, and some of those things react with other molecules in the atmosphere. So uh, a great example are the acids, nitric acid and sulfuric acid right here. Um, nitric acid is reactions with uh, water in the atmosphere from stuff that comes out of your tailpipe, these nitrogen oxides. And sulfuric acid is just sulfur dioxide plus water, essentially. And those make acid rain. So those are secondary pollutants, uh, nitric and sulfuric acid. We'll learn more about uh, uh, acid rain in a, in a few days. Um, and other things you have to be concerned about with respect to air pollution are, of course, their sources, agriculture or fires or industry, but how they are moved around the planet, uh, trans transported uh, by winds or by water, um, and those chemical transformations forming uh, from primary to secondary pollutants along the way. And then, of course, how they're brought back into uh, uh, 
a, a cycle that would impact humanity through drinking water or groundwater? And then what are the effects of the, of the, on human health of those pollutants? So it's quite a complicated subject. Um, the two main sources of outdoor air pollution are, of course, uh, cars and industry. So that's 90% of, of what you're looking at. Uh, forest fires are an important natural source, uh, but also, again, volcanoes, dust storms, and the like. Um, in uh, 2008, um, there were really six uh, par uh, pollutants to be concerned about. I'm going to move my, my screen. Uh, and those are uh, carbon monoxide, uh, nitrogen oxides, vox, volatile organics, sulfur dioxide, sometimes called SOX, S-O-X, because there's sulfur trioxide as well, particulate matter, and lead. Um, so those are the big six uh, that are highly regulated. Uh, so that's these are something you should know. Uh, particulates, well, and we're talking about each one of these in, independently, uh, NOX, SOX, uh, carbon oxides, meaning CO2, carbon dioxide, or carbon monoxide, um, Hydrocarbons are sometimes called VOX because they're VOCs, which stands for volatile organic compounds, and then ozone, which we've touched on briefly. So these are the big six, really important to know. And there's more information here on this slide uh, that you could look up uh, their chemical composition. Are they primary or secondary pollutants, etc.? cetera? Um, so I only have 17 seconds and I'm going to stop here. I'm trying to keep these videos short. Um, and uh, well done. Pay attention. Take notes. And I will see you soon. Take care.